How's everybody doing this Sunday night? Hopefully you've had a nice relaxing day, catching up on a little football and whatnot. We've just got a couple of breaks tonight. Um, it is a, a leaf memorabilia treasury, and then it'll be a half case of heritage high number. So those are the two things we've got on tap. And we have a little information that I'd like to go over before we actually get started ripping into things. So let's go ahead and get that up on the screen. So feedback, that is automated for me on eBay. Anytime that you leave positive feedback for me, you are instantly going to get positive feedback in return. Thanks to the wonders of automation, which, uh, yeah, I'm pretty thankful for. And of course, the second thing there, far more important, is simply to say thank you. Always appreciate you being here, bidding, breaking. Many of you chat with me, hang out with me, keep me, uh, keep me informed of scores and all that kind of stuff. We're next going to take a look at what's coming up in the days ahead. So tomorrow night will be an off night, but then we'll be really uh, back at it in full force on Tuesday night. We'll open cases of clearly authentic baseball, immaculate basketball, gold label baseball, and origins football. On Wednesday night, Triple Threads comes out on Wednesday. So we'll open a uh, nine box inner case of that. I started to say a full case, but it's not. It's a nine box inner case and a full case of TriStar Game Day Greats autographed football jerseys. Then on Thursday night, we're going to open a master case of Phoenix football. So you know how this stuff is. It's uh, always interesting the way Panini does it. But basically, Phoenix football comes in sealed eight-box cases. And Panini will put a, a two of those eight-box cases together in one bigger box. And they will call that a master case. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing is one of the master cases. So it's basically two uh, sealed eight box cases that we'll be opening, but they're just coming out of one larger case. Does that make sense? All right, then on Friday, we've got a new release on Friday as well, and that is Prism Football. And Prism, we will open by the full case on Friday night. That's the only thing we're going to open on Friday night, and that will start early since it is a new release day will get rolling at 8.30 Eastern, which is 5.30 Pacific. Now, the other stuff that we need to know about what we're opening tonight. Our free shipping break, of course, is the Leaf Memorabilia Treasury. And anytime we do a free shipping break, I'm gonna, gonna estimate that that stuff will go out the door. Usually, I say no later than, you know, seven days after the auction ends. This being a Sunday night, Technically, we'll say it will go out no later than Monday the 28th, which is a week from tomorrow. Now, most likely it'll go out sooner, and sometimes that stuff goes out a lot sooner. That's just kind of a no later than estimate on a free shipping break. The other thing about that break, if you get skunked in there and you do not pull anything at all, typically I would hold on to your consolation card and send it out to you the next time you have a package shipping, and that is just simply because it is a free shipping item. But if you want it sent sooner, you only need to send me a little message, let me know, and I will uh, get it on the way to you faster than that. Our paid shipping break tonight is Heritage High Number Baseball. This is gonna, it'll be the start of a new case. It's gonna be a six box half case break. I am estimating that that should be on the way to you approximately Thursday. Now, as always, if I can get something sent to you sooner than the date you see on the screen, I will do so. And uh, if something unexpected comes up, could always go a day later. Right now, Thursday looks like the day. No one's going to get skunked in Heritage High Number. Tons of cards in there, so we don't have to worry uh, about Constellation cards with that break. So first up is a box of Leaf Memorabilia Treasury, and this is break number two. This is a giant box, and it's got loads of, mem well, not loads of, but five memorabilia items in it. It's got loads of categories of things that it can be. So you'll see that those have been broken out there along the way, and then there's one catch-all at the bottom. If we pull something, uh, for instance, that wasn't in any of those other listed categories, it would fall to that. Everything that we're opening tonight, of course, ended tonight on eBay, which is Sunday night, the 20th of October. And I think that's all the info we need to do. I'm going to tweak the uh, focus here a tad little bit. 
and that is because I don't like all that pesky zooming in and out, right? So I know that it made your background go a little bit out of focus, but that was by design, so don't worry about that. We're going to be okay there. So this is a giant box of uh, stuff here, and <laughs> it's like really hard to kind of show you what's in it, but I'm going to try to, we're going to, well, I can't even, all right, I'm going to have to pick the camera up to show you that. I think I can't even get it far enough out. So there is where, you know, it's sealed with the leaf tape and everything. So what I'm going to do, hopefully, without knocking over the camera here, <laughs> is going to be just to have this stuff kind of come right out the top once we get the the seal cut so you can at least see it kind of as it comes out. I may have to pick this up again and get the box down out of the way. It's always challenging to get this done. This is just a big load of bubble wrap. It's noisy. I'm sorry, but I got to get it out of there. All right, so we've got one, two items here separately. You see these smaller ones. I'm going to set them aside so I can get these bigger ones out. And these things are all bubble wrapped together. We got a giant uh, picture for sure, a 16 by 20 it looks like. And some other stuff is on the front of that. But first things first, let's get this giant box perhaps out of the way. <laughs> Holy cow. Hang on. Okay, sorry I had to, that box is too big to even like set up here, it's just a mess. I really would wish they would package this stuff a little bit differently. And Greg is here by the way, looking for the Eagles and the Nationals to play well this week. Jay Allen wants to see three or four 11 by 14s. And uh, Jay Allen, you forgot all about the game tonight, all right. And Charles is here. Your Bears did lose today. I saw part of that, Charles. All right, so first up, we have obviously any football jersey for Dick Butkus. So the football jersey category, getting this one. There's your signature. You've got a JSA authentication sticker, and that's your JSA authentication paperwork on the back. So any football jersey. Then we've got, oh, two big pictures here not one but two um these would appear to me to be 16 by 20s but we're gonna you know just for the sake of checking it out so this one or is that part of yeah that's actually the picture okay i'm just making sure <laughs> that that wasn't like obviously it is though because they've signed on the white part so yeah guys this is as i expected can you see that um, down there that this is a technically a 16 by 20 it might be a shade bigger than that but anyway it is Batman and Robin the original ones from the television show which is Burt Ward and Adam West and I'm just gonna pick it up and let you look at it that way I think that's a little easier way to see the whole thing then beneath it there's another big 16 by 20 so whoever has that category tonight, uh, doing pretty well for themselves. This one is Cam Newton. He's in his collegiate uniform, but of course uh, it doesn't matter because it's going to the category for 16 by 20 photographs. So a pair of those in a football jersey. I swear to you, I don't know why they can't put those 16 by 20s in a mailing box like um, Gold Rush does. But they don't, and it makes it really difficult when it comes time to ship it to find something that works for it. It really frustrates me that they do it that way. But they do. So what are you going to do? Not much. You just got to go with it. All right. We have got a Corbin Burnson autographed baseball here, if I can manage to get it out. So, uh, of course, that goes to the any any signed baseball, any signed actual baseball category. Gets the little Corbin Burns in here and looks like we've got, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> I'll let you read the inscription because, yeah, um, it's a family show, so I'm not going to read it out loud, but that's pretty funny. 
I've never seen a a uh, an inscription like that on a baseball. That's pretty funny. There's your leaf COA. You can see it's kind of bent. That's because that's the way it was in in the uh, box. They had it wrapped around the baseball. So any signed baseball, any football jersey, two 16 by 20 photographs. And our last one out is a signed mini helmet. I can get in there. Good grief. If I can get in here, that is. <laughs> they do not make it easy. All right. Our signed mini helmet is Earl Campbell. And Leaf COA back there. And uh, you can barely see there's a Leaf uh, authentication sticker on the back there as well. So Earl Campbell with the signed mini helmet uh, obviously goes to the any mini helmet category. Then we had a football jersey. We had a signed baseball and two 16 by 20 photographs. And give me a minute, guys. I need to get this uh, out of the line of fire here, and I'll be right back with you. One second, I got to move these 16 by 20s one at a time. All righty, let me get our Next case up here. Oy. Okay. Let's get our spreadsheet information back up. And we're going to roll into some heritage high number. So, <clears throat> probably everybody saw this a minute ago, right? If you were not logged in and you didn't hear me verbally go over all of this information, please read it. Now is your opportunity and hit me up with any questions. All right. It is a six box half case break of Heritage High Number Baseball. This is going to be the start of a new case. Of course, this also ended tonight on eBay Sunday night, the 20th of October. What that, what that means is that I'm going to open it up, take out all 12 boxes, I will number each box on the end, and then use random.org to determine which of the 12 we opened tonight and which of the 12 will be opened in the next break. But first things first, I got to get them out of there. Jay Allen, I'm catching up on chat. So Jay Allen, you were, he's already gone. So I guess I missed, I missed him. Um, and Charles said, you'd like to have the Batman picture. I, you know, right? Do you remember that show when you were a kid? I, I do. I remember that original Batman where they would put up on the screen, you know, boom, pow, all that stuff. It was funny, I thought. All right, let's try and get... Uh, the rest of these out of here. Boy, they wedged them in there, which is good so they don't move around, but challenging when it comes time to dig them out. All right, and I'm just going to number them up here, and we will use random to figure out which ones we're opening tonight, which ones we'll open the next time around, and like that so on and so forth anytime i have uh, anytime we go to random if i have nine or fewer items in my list i do random three times and only the third counts when we have 10 or more as we do tonight i do random only once
So I'll just hit random one time. What, however it comes up, we'll open uh, the corresponding boxes for the first six numbers. So it gives us 6, 12, 1, 10, 5, and 8. So 1, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12. 1, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12. All right. Well, there's the 1. 5, 6, 8. Um, and there's 10. And there is 12. Let me get the other six put back in their case, and then we'll get cranking on this. Yeah, Charles, I forgot Adam West had passed away, but yeah, you're right. He did, uh, I had forgotten all about that till you mentioned it, but it would be, uh, I guess, put his stuff in a, a little harder, a little more demand, I guess. It usually happens that way after somebody passes. So we've got one box loader in each of these boxes, and they will vary. It will vary what that box loader is. So, um... We'll just talk about them as we come across them. Right now, you can see this one is going to have an original 1970 card inside. And so that means it's not going to be, you know, minty, mint, and perfect because it's really a card from 1970. So they're usually miscut. They're going to be well loved generally, especially around the corners and the edges and all that kind of stuff. It's just updated with the 50th anniversary stamp there that tops ads. And that one is headed to the Phillies for our box loader here. Box loader number one, anyway. And we are looking for, here in Heritage High number, one autograph or relic card per box. So uh, there's lots of other stuff in here that we'll find, including some refractor, some chrome cards like this. That is numbered to 569. We'll find a few of those as we go along, I imagine. And there will be some other parallels I'm sure we will see. There are probably some image variations in here as well. Some of them I may catch while we're going live. Some of them I may not because I haven't opened this uh, but once and I only opened it right when it first came out. But don't worry, all the cards ship. So even if we don't stop and talk about an image variation as it goes by, uh, if you see it and it's for your team, of course you're going to get it. Now and then, that's just an example of an insert set that we will find kind of throughout the product. Those typically are not numbered. If, they're, if that varies, I will let you know. And what else is there about this product that we need to talk about? Yeah, I think that's the majority of it. You know, we'll just, if, as we come across other things, we'll discuss them. Rookie Performers, that insert set, again, is generally not going to be numbered, and we will find it throughout the product here in good old high number. I know there are a couple people that have a lot of teams in here. Uh, so you guys that have a lot of teams, you are going to get some big boxes <laughs> with lots of cards in them this is a very base card heavy product it's one of the reasons we haven't broken it uh, as much as some of the others because it just takes such a long time to sort and ship especially the sorting this takes forever so i have a bad habit you know of kind of shuffling those back and not breaking them as much or as often i should say But the pace they put things out these days, man, it's hard to keep up regardless. Yankees Prodigies insert. It used to be that you might have a week or two where something you'd get by with something not 
having a release. Um, I don't do that too much anymore. These days it's every, just about every week you've got one, two, three, sometimes more releases. Never gives much time to get caught up. I'm supposed to be going uh, on a little, little quick trip at the end of the month, so I'll see if that works out or not. If it does, we'll probably take a few nights off from breaking. Uh, and probably a few nights before I leave as well, just to make sure that I have everything caught up and shipped out before I go and that sort of thing. So maybe, we may be taking a little bit of a break, but we'll see. So the Astros have a black border, and those are not numbered, but they are generally uh, pretty scarce. I, uh, typically, Tops will announce the print run of those, and I'm sure I knew it when we first opened these. Off the top of my head, I'm not certain, but typically those would be maybe somewhere around 50 copies, even though it is not numbered. Again, Tops usually will kind of announce uh, about what the number is. So that's, I'm going to guess, somewhere in that neighborhood without knowing for certain because I don't have it in front of me. Uh, that's an example, again, of just one that's it's a little bit of a variation only because it's got the all-star uh, rookie cup on there. I think technically it's very strictly speaking, I think, still base, but I'm just uh, pointing it out because I look at it. I consider that to be kind of a variation or an insert sort of thing, really, when you get the rookie cup on there. I don't know if Tops technically does or not consider that an insert, but I sort of do. Oh, I forgot we had these in here, too. So these little scratch-off games uh, are in there, and there's always really heavy wear in the fold, which you can kind of see as I open that one up, probably, um, just because of the way they're made. They've got that little kind of punched uh, fold there, so there's always a lot of heavy wear in the crease of those little scratch-off games. But that particular one was the Padres. Hank Aaron insert. There's plenty of those that will come across. I think there are, uh, aren't there some Rivera inserts in here too? No, I take that back. Those were, those were, uh, another product that was finest or something. I think that's where we had the Mariano Rivera. We're in those and the Hank Aaron in here, I believe. So a super baseball card is our box loader in box number two. You know what? We didn't have an autograph for a relic in box number one. I just now realized that. We got no autograph for relic. Did, did we? No. Did I? Did you guys see one go by? Because I did not. <laughs> I just now realized that. There was no There was no autograph for relic in box number one. We should have had one or the other. I'm just skimming back through here real quickly um, to make sure I didn't go past it, but I don't think I did because wouldn't you guys have noticed it if I somehow didn't just give me one second I'm just shuffling back through them real quickly yeah okay so Charles said the same thing I did yeah there was nothing in that box he didn't see it go by either I didn't I don't think it did and I'm I'm just uh again I'm just shuffling back through here real quickly double checking through all this base but I'm pretty sure they ripped us off on that which kind of is unhappy. They do that every once in a while. It's not super often, uh, but I have had it happen both with Tops and Panini, but that's really frustrating. So, aha, 
We did. It did. It, it is in there, guys. It's in there, and I did just went past it and didn't catch it. And I guess you guys didn't catch it when I went past either, but that's why I wanted to go back through them. There it is. So it's the Giants and Derek Rodriguez that somehow, not only did I not see it, um, nobody else saw it either. So I don't know what the deal is, but anyway, found it. That's why I wanted to shuffle back through them and see. So we did have it. Just didn't know I had it. So Super Baseball is uh, just a big oversized card. That's another option, of course, for box loaders in here. And this one is Mr. Christian Yelich for the Milwaukee Brewers. Oh, Charles, you have the Giants. So <laughs> that worked out all right, man. Yeah, see, I'm glad I'm not the only one that didn't catch it. I felt like if, you, if somebody there had seen it, they would have, one of you guys had seen it, you would have also said like, hey, you just went past it. I mean, it is every once in a while an autograph will kind of fade into the into the uh, image and I might not catch it not too often but every once in a while it happens but that one I just didn't see that at all but at least I'm not alone you guys didn't see it either so it makes me feel a little better all right so rolling on along here into box number two had a good start with the autograph, of course, in box one, once we found it. Many times you get relics, which is what we're going to have here in the second box. And our relic is Mr. Giancarlo Stanton from the recently eliminated New York Yankees. I tell you what, I thought that they were maybe going to come back. When they got it all tied up there in the ninth and you've got two outs, I mean, come on. And you've got, uh, oh, I mean, they should have been able to carry that into extra innings. Araldus Chapman, man, he just, I don't know, he choked or something. That might be an image variation. Uh, let's see. No, it's not. It's a standard. I just, he just, I don't know. He just put that, left that pitch right over the plate. I mean, that had to be a mistake pitch. Couldn't have meant to send that to Altuve. That just, oh, that was rough for the Yankees because it looked every bit of the world like they were going to get to extra innings and have another shot at it. And then, whoo, Jose does the big walk-off homer, and that's the end of that. But truthfully, it will set it up to be probably a more interesting World Series because it's going to come down to pitching, I think, more than anything else. So this is another Chrome variation. It is numbered to 999. So when they don't refract, they're to 999. When they do refract, they're to 569. I actually thought it had might, you know, have been a little bit of fun if we could have gotten to a game seven tonight, but it was not meant to be. For sure. And you gotta hope the Nationals didn't get too much rest, right? Like <laughs> gotten like what a week off or something practically so you hope they didn't get too relaxed sometimes i think it's good to have all those days off but in other ways it can be bad i guess well exactly charles says he you know, talking about Chapman, you know, he can throw over 100 miles an hour, but the pitch that got hit out was an 85 mile an hour change up. But what I'm, yeah, but it had to be, I still just feel like he just located that in the wrong spot. I don't, I don't know that he meant to throw it faster and I don't know that he meant to throw a different pitch. I just think he meant to have it located in a different spot and just dropped it right over, right over the plate instead and boom out she goes
But the Yankees, kind of all year, I think, were a bit live and die by the home run. They don't, they're not, or they were not a team that really get a, you know, get a guy on and then let's see what happens kind of stuff. Uh, that is a variation. They are more knock it out of the park or nothing <laughs> or walk. <laughs> I mean, there's certainly, sure, there are some base hits and things they did throughout the year, but they were by and large live and die by the home run. And that's a tough way to go if your bats go cold. I know Charles is saying that it's both ex-Tigers that are going to be starting the the World Series. Uh, I know. Crazy, right? Makes life tough there when you're the, the Tigers fans missing your guys. But Verlander and Cole, they are pretty tough. That is a variation as well for Victor Robles. Some of these are just uh, high number short prints, but there are a couple of different variation types in here. And again, I'm probably not going to catch all of them as we go through live because I have not broken this product in a while and have only broken it once overall. But those that I do see as we go through, I'll call them out. But since all the cards uh, ship, you're going to you're going to get it. If you see it go by and you own the team, it's coming to you. I knew the Tigers lost a bunch this year. I didn't know they lost over a hundred, um, but I, you know, I knew they had a bit of a rough year. Tigers are a little bit like my Reds. It's just kind of hard to get them on track for any length of time because they a small market team, not a big payroll. You know, you get you get a star, and they're going to trade them basically. <laughs> they're, they're not going to pay them the big bucks that some of these other teams can and do and will pay. So that's what happens. You can draft well and you can develop well and you can have great guys right up until the time when it's going to be about free agency. And then they're bye, bye, bye. So the Indians with our original 1970 card, once again, you got the foil stamp on it and terribly miscut soft edges and corners. The, the whole deal, a well-loved card. Uh, from the 1970s is our box loader. I just want the World Series to be interesting. I just want it to be good games, close games. I don't want to have a bunch of blowouts, which I don't think we will, considering who's going to be pitching on both sides. But We had a game today, um, and I believe that's a variation as well. Um... What was that final score? It was like a crazy score in the Vikings game. I mean, somebody, it was like up in the 30s, like 30-something 30 to 20-something. We had some high-scoring football games today. I didn't really get a chance to sit down and watch any game all the way through or even most of the way through, but I got to see bits and pieces of different games as I was going from room to room getting some things done today. I heard someone say that Lamar Jackson is now uh, fifth in the league in rushing yards. Not not fifth in the league for quarterback rushing yards. Fifth in the league, the entire league in rushing yards. I mean, the guy just is incredible, isn't he? When it comes to to running the ball, he's getting a lot better with throwing too. He was never never terrible, but he he definitely needed to button some things up and he did some of that in the off season and they also um, reconfigured the offense to better set his better suit his skill set in over the winter or in the off season I should say 
combination of the two has the Ravens looking pretty good. Oh, it ended up being 42 to 30 in that game. Yeah, see, like I knew it was some crazy score. <laughs> 42 to 30. It's like, yeah, anybody feel like playing defense much in that game? Not so much, I guess. Teddy Bridgewater got the Saints to another win. So, I think, is Drew Brees due back their next game? I want to say maybe he is. If it's not the next game, it's the one following. So that, you know, Teddy's, that may have been his last start for the season, or he may have one more coming, but he's coming close to the end of of his run and replacing Drew Brees. But I got to tell you, Teddy's been looking good. And every week he just looks better. Gets more comfortable and they're going to have to pay him to keep him, you know. That one is, I guess, just base. I thought it was a variation, but apparently it's not. They're going to have to pay him well or trade him. I think they'll pay him to be the heir apparent after Breeze retires because Drew is getting kind of old, you know. I don't particularly like or dislike the Saints. I don't really, you know, they don't really impact me one way or another. But I'm just glad to see Teddy doing well. You know, after, well, first of all, he played up the road at U of L, And when he played up there, of course, oh, it was awful. We couldn't stand it, right? Because he's our arch rival, U of L is. The arch rival to our um, <laughs> Kentucky Wildcats. However, you know, then I was rooting for him once he got, got to the NFL and gosh that he was off to such a promising start when he had that devastating injury they thought he would maybe even never be able to come back and play again so for him to not only be back but to be playing as well as he is I'm just happy for the guy no well, that one's base too some of these I think they're variations and we get there and they're not Justin Upton with the Clubhouse Collection Relic for the Angels. We are halfway through. We have opened three and we have three remaining. And I think this Byron Buxton, I think that is a uh, variation of some point, of some sort, image or short print or something. Yeah, it does. It is. Right as I was getting ready to set it down, I thought, that, that does look like a variation. So we flip it over and find out it is. Another super baseball card. So just the oversized uh, card is going to be our box loader here. Padres with a little uh, Fernando Tatis. Thinking about the rookies this year, um, man, Jordan Alvarez, what has happened to him? He was fitting really quite well through the regular season. I swear to you, I don't know if the guy's had a hit in the postseason. Has he? Does anybody know? Has he actually had a hit? I'm not being facetious, I'm really not sure if he has. He's been quite horrible the entire postseason. It's like he fell off a cliff. I don't know what happened. He hit the rookie wall very late in the year or something. 
But I would like to see him get back on track in the World Series. Because he played so well um, throughout the regular season. You really hate to see him end on this kind of note. It's a variation. Gio Gonzalez. I mean, they still got him in there. You know, he's the DH, so they're they're moving him down in the lineup, but he's still in there. But good grief, uh, he's just fallen off a cliff. Of course, his rookie cards are going to be found in. 2020 Series 1 is where we'll find Jordan Alvarez and Bo Bichette. Their rookie cards both will show up uh, beginning with 2020 Series 1. I think it's Major League Baseball to a certain extent that, that guides when those rookie cards come out. I mean, I, someone told me that once. There was a whole process behind, like, why some guys come later than others. Because, obviously, I mean, Jordan Alvarez came up fairly early this year. You would have thought, well, he easily, they could have put his, his rookies into update. And really, probably Bichette, too. But Alvarez would have made more sense, even. But, I, you know, obviously they deferred him. But I do think that Major League Baseball or the Players Association, one or both, has some sort of say in when the cards get, when the rookie cards fall for whatever reason. I'll have to go back and ask about that. One of my distributor reps used to work for Upper Deck, so I ask him all kinds of questions about stuff like that and he usually has the answer so i bet he will know a chrome parallel numbered to 999 for the cardinals with tyler o'neill tear because I had it grabbed by the wrong end huh Kansas City Chiefs, of course, Pat Mahomes uh, got hurt on Thursday night. I want to say he dislocated a knee. I think it was a knee. Um, he just adds to the tally of quarterbacks that have been injured this year. It's crazy how many it applies to this year. Cody Bellinger relic for the Dodgers. And I guess they've announced that it will be Matt Moore who's going to be starting in his place. And Kyle Shermer, the rookie, backing him up. Honestly, I was kind of hoping Shermer would get a chance to get the start. I didn't really think that he would, but I thought it would have been kind of cool if he did. But no, indeed, it is going to Matt Moore. And I guess uh, what he's out like. Six weeks or something, Mahomes, I mean. Five or six weeks, I think. Yeah, Charles, I saw Zion Williamson 
uh, hurt his ankle, sprained an ankle or did something. I, I don't think it looked like it was going to be too bad. Going to miss a couple weeks maybe, but the last I heard it didn't seem like that was going to be too major of a thing. Um, but yeah, of course you don't ever want to see that happen, especially a, a rookie as heralded as he is. But fortunately it didn't seem like it was going to be too severe with Zion. Ichiro and the Mariners with our Super Baseball card box loader. So we're now three of those and two of the 1970 original cards. But Zion, he's, I think everybody already knew, but he's definitely going to be the real deal. Tyler, Tyler Hero's been looking good. I think Rue Hachim, Hachimura for the Wizards has been... Looking pretty good. Oh, we're in our hot box. So we're going to find a bunch of these. And they are purple. And they refract. And they are the chrome inserts. But they're not numbered. They are unique to the hot box, though. It's the only place you will find those. And if memory serves, I think we will find one per pack. So I will just probably uh, wait and sleeve them all right at the very end. Or actually, we'll do these two now because we're upon our hit. Looks like it's going to be for the Red Sox. And I think it's going to be Michael Chavez, that autograph hit. But let me get these two purples and sleeves since I'm already at a stopping point here to grab the autograph. So, yeah, you got a little... Michael Chavez there for the Red Sox with an autograph. So nice little hit there, Red Sox. Here in Hot Box Land. Um, oh, Charles, it's his knee. I thought it was his ankle, but it was it's his knee for Zion. Okay. Yeah, I remember when he had that injury at Duke. It was actually when his, uh, it was a freak kind of thing. His shoe blew out when he was driving to the basket, and it ended up causing him to sprain his knee when he was at Duke. And, of course, he only had the one season there. But that, again, it healed up fairly quickly, and I'm surprised to hear that it's still that, uh, still that knee. For some reason, I thought it was... Uh, his ankle or something he had gotten this last time, but but sounds like it's the same knee then. Yeah, that was the craziest thing though. I mean, his shoe just absolutely blew apart. It was wild. I'm sure most of you probably remember that. If you follow basketball, you remember it anyway. If you if you don't, then you're probably like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> this is uh, to 999 Ichiro for the Mariners with a base chrome. While I'm stopping for a minute, I'm going to go ahead and get our other purple parallels in their sleeves. And then we'll roll on into the next group. It's just easier in the hot box to wait and do several at once than to stop and do them one at a time since they come out one per pack. There's a lot in here. Has anybody ever actually scratched one of those off? Like, how do you play that little game? It probably says on there how you play it, but I just don't remember it. Variation. Austin Meadows, Tampa Bay Rays. I 
it's not like you could grade those little scratch off cards because you know they're not made for that so if i got if i got one i probably would just scratch it off just to see what's what <laughs> i mean why not right Getting those two purple all sleeved up. And we'll open another stack. Anybody happen to know what the score is in the Cowboys-Eagles game at the moment? see if that McCutcheon's a variation. Yes, it is. For the Phillies. sunny gray. Sunny turned out to be a nice acquisition for my little Cincinnati Reds. They bounced around a little but settled in quite nicely when he got to Cincinnati so hopefully we'll be able to keep him for a little bit. All right, let me get the rest of these purples sleeved up real quickly, and then we'll move on into our last box. And as we normally do, we call a little last box mojo when we get into the final one of the night, and hope that uh, collectively we can call forth the big fiery hits. Call upon the mojo. See if it'll bring us a little Sunday night love. Almost got them. One more to go. All right. Now all of our purples are happily put away in sleeves. Of course, after we go through this last box here, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> apparently after we go through the last box, I will choke on something. Um, we'll recap everything. So, well, not everything. We'll recap the box loaders, um, the chrome cards, uh, autographs, that sort of thing. After we recap, I'll put up the shipping information one final time if anyone did not catch that earlier. And then we'll also take another look at what's coming up in the days ahead. Did that not cut through? Are you kidding me? What in the world? Okay. All right, well then, uh, let's just shake it on down and do it again. That's the easiest way. For the Expos, you got a little uh, 1970 Originals Mac Jones as our box loader out of the final box for tonight.
believe it's almost Halloween. And obviously, we got a few days left to go, but it's kind of right upon us, all things considered. Our last box has the hit uh, for Clubhouse Collection, so it's a relic. Lewis Brinson, the final hit of the night. Now, for the Marlins, well, the final hit like that, we may still have other variations or chrome cards, etc. So we might still have hits, but the last autograph or relic, I should say. Heads to the Marlins. getting there slowly but surely making a little progress base cards in this. I mean, it's good for set builders and things, but it definitely uh, is more challenging when it comes to breaking and sorting. So Vlad Guerrero Jr. here is a variation for Toronto and the Blue Jays. We've got triple threads that comes out on Wednesday for those of you who might be inclined to go towards some of the high-end stuff. We're going to rip a whole uh, nine box enter on release night, Wednesday night. That might be the only Wednesday release, and then Friday of next week we've got Prism Football, so that's a biggie, of course. Marwin Gonzalez, I thought was a variation, but it wasn't. <laughs> so I started to tell you it had a variation, but I was wrong. Scratch off for Starling Marte. Pittsburgh Pirates. I think I see a little chrome glowing in the background there. Yeah, and a refractor, no less. So to 569. Tyler O'Neill for the Cardinals. All right, there you go. Let's do a little recapping. We will probably just start off with. I guess our box loaders, I guess we'll look at those first. 
and then roll through the rest of it. So once again, these original cards from the 1970s, uh, they're all terribly miscut. They're all well-loved with well-worn corners and edges. That's just how they rolled back in the 70s. If you got a card that was actually cut well, it was a miracle. <laughs> of course, those are really tops buys them back from wherever. All they do is update them by adding that little anniversary stamp. Our other box loaders were the uh, super-sized cards here, super baseball cards, I believe they call them. The tops refers to them as that. Now, I'm sure that there are more variations, but these are just the ones I caught as we were going live. Once again, everything ships, so if you saw it go through, you're going to get it. Black border for the Astros, that is not numbered, but there are not many of them. These are all variations. Vlad Guerrero Jr. for the Blue Jays, Kutch for the Phillies, Meadows for the Rays, Gonzalez Brewers, Buxton for the Twins, Ichiro Mariners, Robles Nationals, Christian Walker for the Diamondbacks, and Alfaro for the Marlins are all variations bunch of chromes to look through mostly because we hit the hot box uh, but that one is of course a refractor meaning it is also going to be numbered to 569 and we have a base chrome that'll be numbered to 999 another refractor that'll be to 569 i want to say there was one more base in here somewhere but i guess if there was we'll run across it in a minute all these purple hot boxes are not numbered they are the only place you find them are in the hot box so they are purple, they're chrome, they refract, but they're not numbered. Yeah, there's our other one that is numbered to 999. I thought there was one hanging around somewhere. Oh, and one more, Tyler O'Neill to 999. All right, so that's all your chrome variations, which brings us to our little stack of autographs and relics. Lewis Brinson for the Marlins, an autograph for Michael Chavez and the Red Sox. A relic for Cody Bellinger and the Dodgers. A relic for Justin Upton and the Angels. A little relic for the Yankees with John Carlos Stanton. And our first autograph, which tried to hide from us, is Derek Rodriguez for the San Francisco Giants. All right, there's the break, there's the recap. Let's put up spreadsheet information here one more time. If anybody missed it earlier, here it comes your way right now. So the Leaf Memorabilia Treasury, uh, that was a free shipping break. Those are the memorabilia items, of course. And if you pulled something in that break, you can expect it to ship no later than Monday the 28th, which is uh, roughly seven days from today. Obviously not exact, but close. And often it goes sooner, but it should not go any later than that. If you got skunked in that memorabilia break and you did not uh, pull anything for your category, typically I would hang on to your consolation card until your next package shipped if it was a free shipping break, which I think it was tonight. If not, then you would get your consolation cards right away. But I think it was free shipping break tonight. So, yeah. I would hold on to them to your next package if it was a free break, a free shipping break. And if you want it sent sooner, all you need to do is send me a message on eBay. Let me know and I'll take care of it for you. Our paid shipping break tonight, of course, was Heritage High Number. I expect that will be on the way to you approximately Thursday. If I can get it out to you sooner than that, I will. If something unexpected happens. It could always slide a day later to Friday, but as it stands right now, I expect it will most likely be Thursday. Everybody pull cards here in Heritage High Number. Tons of cards went through this break, so you don't have to worry about consolation cards there. Here's what's coming up in the days ahead. So tomorrow night is an off night. Tuesday night, we're going to break uh, four different cases. It'll be clearly authentic baseball, immaculate basketball, gold label baseball, and Origins football. Wednesday is Triple Threads release day. We'll open a nine box in our case of that. I think I forgot to put this on there, but I'm pretty sure that uh, we're I'm pretty sure we're starting early on Wednesday night too. So I think I better pop that back on there. I think we're I think we are starting or maybe we're not starting early there oh I don't know maybe I should take that back off there I'll double check that anyway on Wednesday night for sure that's what we're opening 
is Triple Threads by the Inner Case. In a case of TriStar Game Day Greats autographed football jerseys, on Thursday night we will open a master case of Phoenix football, which is 16 boxes comprised of two sealed eight-box inners in a sealed larger box. On Friday night we will start at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, and we'll open a 12-box case of Prism football, which is the new release for Friday. And that is it for me tonight, kids. As always, appreciate you being here. Hope you have a great start to your week tomorrow. I am off tomorrow night. Be back at it Tuesday night. So if I don't see you then, I hope I will see you again soon. In the meantime, enjoy. Have a good week ahead.